there, everybody. Welcome back to Legends Lore. We are no longer story mode. If you have not seen my post, uh, the channel has switched names. But with the rebranding, with the new graphics, with all of the changes, comes a new focus this year. We are going to be focusing on a ton of pop culture content, not just the same things we've seen over the years. And check out that post for all the things I have coming but I have a lot of great ideas and a lot of cool things I want to do on this channel. We're going to start off the year with something that I think most movie pop culture channels do. Let's talk about our most anticipated films of the year. I've gathered about 50 of the most anticipated movies of the year across all different sites, and I'm going to rank them in a tier list format like I usually do here on this channel. So I'm going to dive into that. Please, if you haven't yet, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. It really helped me out. Also, comment below. Let me know what your most anticipated movies of the year are. There are so many good movies coming out this year, or hopefully good movies, but cool franchises and a lot of great ideas. Let's jump into the tiers right here. So let's start off with Adam Driver 65. Adam Driver 65 was a movie I did not know existed until that trailer came out, and it looks pretty cool. I'm a big fan of Adam Driver. I'm a big fan of his version of Kylo Ren, of course, but also all the dramas he's done, Marriage Story. And so with this movie, I would say I'll watch this in theaters. I think this is a movie that I'm definitely interested in checking out. So next we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This movie is definitely an opening night for me. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is one of those landmark animation films that just really uh, left an impact on almost everybody who saw it. I will definitely be checking this out opening night. Third up is Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom is the second Aquaman movie, and it's been a long time since we've gotten an Aquaman movie. It'll be five years at this point. For this one, for me, I will put Watch It in theaters. It's a movie that I'm not really that excited for, especially with the DCEU shakeup and with James Gunn kind of coming in and changing everything. This seems like it won't really matter much when we watch this movie. Next is Asteroid City, the first of two possible Wes Anderson movies coming out this year. I will definitely see this opening weekend. I really enjoy Wes Anderson's movie. Movies. He's one of the most interesting auteur filmmakers we have. So, of course, I'll be checking out Asteroid City the opening weekend. Here's one of the most interesting projects of the whole year, Barbie by Greta Gerwig, starring Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Of course, if this was any other creative team, I would probably not put this in. I would put it in watch if the reviews are good. But because of the creative team behind it, because of Greta Gerwig's work, I actually really, really liked her version of Little Women. I thought that was the best film she's made as a director. I think I'm going to put this in watch in theaters. I don't know. Still, personally, you know, I don't know how hyped I can get for a Barbie movie, even if the reviews are awful for it. There's something that's just really interesting about this. And I've, I've got to see what it is. Next is a movie I really don't know much about. And, and that's Ari Aster's new movie, Bo is Afraid, which is a dark horror surrealist comedy. I'm interested for him to go in that direction. Ari Aster's first two films were, were great. I, I mean, Hereditary is one of the scariest movies, in my opinion, I've ever seen. It's a movie that I have not wanted to watch a second time, but it's an all-time horror classic. It's one of the best horror movies I've ever seen. Midsummer, I thought, was really good visually. Ari Aster has become one of the best auteurist horror filmmakers working today, so I'm definitely interested in checking out Bo is Afraid. I will put this and see it opening weekend and probably ahead of Asteroid City. So after that is Blue Beetle. Blue Beetle was originally scheduled for HBO Max release only, but with the shakeup of leadership over at DC, they're throwing this out in theaters, which is a good sign of confidence in my opinion. A Batgirl was just completely scrapped. So the fact that they are, I think Blue Beetle is good enough to even put in theaters and not just shove on a streaming service or just, I'm excited for. If this does follow the Jaime Reyes version of Blue Beetle, I believe Ted Court is in it though still. So I'm excited to see see both versions i'm interested in seeing this i would say it's watching theaters i'd probably put it behind aquaman because i know what i'm kind of getting with aquaman but at the same time blue beetle the fact that they're putting it in theaters gives me a lot of confidence so next up we have cocaine bear cocaine bear is a movie that looks really interesting and weird i can't get myself too hyped for this movie i think i'd put it in catch on streaming it's not one of my most anticipated of the year by any means but it looks like an interesting beginning of the year type movie that could end up being a lot more fun than it probably deserves to be now we've got Creed 3. Creed 3 is one of the movies I'm going to put on C opening weekend. I've enjoyed the entire Creed series, even if Creed 2 was a step down from Creed 1. Excited to see what Michael B. Jordan brings from the director's chair. And just seeing those that IMAX preview of what he's planning on doing, especially with IMAX cameras. I'm interested in checking this out in theaters. And this will be, I think, one that you'll want to see with a crowd opening weekend. Now one of the most anticipated movies of the year, for sure, Dune Part 2. This is jumping to the top of my opening night. Dune was my favorite favorite movie of 2021. I cannot wait to see what Denis Villeneuve has crafted here for the end. Anytime Denis Villeneuve's doing a film, 
And anytime it's sci-fi as well, it's got to be up there. Absolutely love Dune 1. Next up is Elemental. Pixar has been a little bit hit and miss for me. I was not a big fan of Lightyear, but I did like Turning Red a lot more than I thought I was going to. I thought it was a really good movie, actually. And Soul was one of my favorite movies of 2020. This could fall anywhere for me. I think I'm going to put Watch in theaters. And right now I might have it just ahead of Blue Beetle. Now we have Evil Dead Rise. Evil Dead Rise. I saw the trailer for it the other day and I was actually, I thought it looked like a really bad horror movie. Then I realized it was Evil Dead. So I feel like I got a little bit more of the tongue in, tongue in cheek look that it, it was given off in the trailer i'll put this on catch on streaming it doesn't really look that appealing to me right now personally but because it's evil dead and i have seen all the evil dead movies i'll probably check it out at some point fast 10 so the fast and the furious movies they've been getting worse eight was worse than seven nine was worse than eight 10 might be the worst of them all i don't know but i will actually watch this in theaters because i want to see it with a crowd so next is Ferrari, directed by Michael Mann, starring Adam Driver. This is, seems to be the year of Adam Driver. He's picking his projects so well. Michael Mann, maybe return to form here. I think this movie's going to be really cool. I'm going to put this in watch in theaters. Ghostbusters Firehouse, I'm interested in this movie. I did not see Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's, it's, Ghostbusters have never been a franchise that I've personally loved. I've only seen the first one and then the reboot with the all-female cast. I'm going to put this one in Catch on Streaming, at the top of Catch on Streaming. Guardians of the Galaxy volume three this is my most anticipated comic book film of the year i'll spoil that right now i'm gonna see this opening night i'm just excited to see what james gunn's had in store he's had these ideas and the script for what like six years at this point i cannot wait to see what the culmination of this story is it really feels like an ending it looks like an ending we're actually going to have some impactful character moments and maybe deaths who knows but i think this is going to be an emotionally investing very funny lighthearted, an appreciation of these characters and the journey we've been on across this trilogy. I think this will cap off maybe what is the MCU's tightest trilogy in terms of its storytelling connecting from one film to the next. I can't wait to see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. The Wonderful Story of Henry Sugar is another possible film from Wes Anderson coming out this year. I'm not sure if this one is going to. It seems like Asteroid City might Instead of this one, this might be pushed to 2024. It's based on a book by Roald Dahl. Anything Wes Anderson is worth seeing for me. I think I would drop it, I guess, in a tier below Asteroid City because it doesn't seem to be coming out this year. <laughs> How do you live the next film from Hayao Miyazaki? It's been the first, it's the first film in 10 years we've gotten from him. I can't wait to see this. This is going an opening night. I will be there if it's showing in my, in my town. I can't wait to see what Miyazaki brings next. Wind Rises is one of my favorite Miyazaki films. And the fact that that was kind of his send-off from filmmaking. What brought him back? I want to see what the story is here that really brought him back and made him want to return 10 years later because I'm sure it's going to be awesome. The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is a film I had no idea was coming out. I don't feel like they marketed this very well. Maybe it comes out at the end of the year. I didn't even know there were more Hunger Games books written. I watched the other four Hunger Games movies and I think they're better than most YA adaptations. I read the first Hunger Games book. This one though, I'm not that excited for. I feel like we're too far away from Hunger Games to really make me that interested i feel like the general public feels the same i'm actually going to put this at the bottom of catch on streaming next is indiana jones and the dial of destiny or indiana jones 5 i'm putting this one at the top of my opening night tier this is probably my most anticipated movie of the year i love indiana jones i'm a huge fan of pretty much anything george lucas has done and raiders of the lost ark and the last crusade are two of my favorite movies of all time i think this is gonna be a really cool return to form harrison ford's always had a bit more passion about indiana jones so i'm excited about that John Williams, another Indiana Jones score. Of course, I'm excited about that. And I'm also excited to see what James Mangold brings to this world. The trailer was awesome. Definitely at the top of my opening night tier. John Wick Chapter 4 is a movie that I'm very excited to see. I really enjoyed John Wick Chapter 3, and I think these movies have gotten better and better. Chapter 3 and 2 are pretty close for me. I'm not sure which one's my favorite. I'm excited for this movie. This will be an opening weekend for me. I think it's going to be at the top of my opening weekend tier for me right now. Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't know if this is coming to theaters. I know it's an Apple TV Plus film, but it is from Martin Scorsese. And because it's from Martin Scorsese and the first film we've gotten from him in a while, I will be dropping this in my opening night tier. I'm excited about it. Of course, the cast is awesome. It's Scorsese. It'll be right there at the top for me. Hopefully it comes to theaters, though. That would be so cool to be able to watch it on a big screen.
Kingsman 3 or Kingsman the Blue Blood is supposed to be coming out this year. This one is a little bit iffy. Kingsman the Golden Circle was, I really did not enjoy at all, but I really enjoyed Kingsman 1. I thought it was a big surprise. I probably put it in watch if the reviews are good. I'm really not that excited about this movie. Next, we have M. Night Shyamalan's Knock at the Cabin. I've been seeing a ton of promotional material for this. This is coming out pretty soon. M. Night Shyamalan is so hit and miss. I enjoyed Split a lot. I've enjoyed so many of his films in the past, but also there's films like The Happening, which I think are so bad, they're good. This gives me a little bit of Happening vibes, not gonna lie. I do think this will be good. He seems to be a filmmaker that's a bit more restrained now and a bit more in control of his craft. For me, I'll probably put this in Catch on Streaming at the top of Catch on Streaming because it is M. Night Shyamalan and I do enjoy his films when they are good. Craven the Hunter is a film I forgot was coming out. One of my favorite Spider-Man villains of all time. I'm not excited for this really at all, even though Craven is one of my favorite villains. I've not really enjoyed either of the Venom films, and Morbius was obviously a disaster last year, so I don't really trust these Sony-led villain, Spider-Man villain movies. I'm gonna put this in watch if the reviews are good. The Little Mermaid, Disney's latest live action remake. The last few live action remakes have really done nothing for me. I was pretty on board back when Jungle Book was coming out. I thought that was a pretty good movie. Even Beauty and the Beast, I enjoyed. Pete's Dragon. This will drop into watch if the reviews are good. Maxine is a film I don't know if I really can judge too well. I have not watched X or Pearl, so I would need to watch those obviously before I saw this. But I'm excited for another horror franchise to build up here. T West is doing a great job from what I here with this franchise. If I can catch the other ones, I'll probably put it on catch on streaming though, because it doesn't have much anticipation for me now because I have not seen the other one. Megalopolis is the first film in a while from Francis Ford Coppola. I'm excited for this. Again, Adam Driver is in this as well. Of course, Francis Ford Coppola hasn't really made an all-time classic in quite a while, but anytime a filmmaker of his status comes to the forefront and is making something new, with a very talented cast, you have to at least look at it and pay attention to it. I'm going to put in watch in theaters mostly because of his misses recently. Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 or Mission Impossible 7. Really excited for this. Mission Impossible Fallout was my favorite of the series so far. These films just keep getting better and better. Tom Cruise just is pushing himself to the limit. We saw, if you saw Avatar and IMAX, you got to see that trailer, that behind the scenes footage of him doing his motorcycle stunt off the cliff with the parachute. I mean, it just looks amazing. I can't wait to see this. This is actually going to go into opening night as well. We've got the latest historical epic from Ridley Scott starring Joaquin Phoenix as Napoleon. Ridley Scott, of course, like a lot of these classic filmmakers over the years, has become a bit of a hit and miss type of director. I am very excited to see what he does here, though. One of his bread and butters are historical epics. I think Napoleon has a chance to be amazing. I'm going to drop it just in front of Megalopolis. One of the movies I had no idea was coming out next year or supposedly coming out next year is Next Goal Wins by Taika Waititi starring Michael Fassbender as a Dutch coach who comes to the American Samoa to coach their soccer team and try to turn them into a winner. I mean, I love soccer and fo slash football. I love Taika Waititi, even if Thor Love and Thunder was one of my least favorite Taika Waititi movies ever, might be my least favorite ever. I'm pretty excited for this. I'll actually say see opening weekend. Taika Waititi still has enough of my respect and enough of my my praise to want to go Jojo Rabbit, Thor Ragnarok, Hunt for the Wilder People, What We Do in the Shadows. I love all those films. I'll put this at the bottom of my opening weekend. I feel pretty confident that this is going to be at least a really good time in theaters. The Nightingale is a film starring Elle and Dakota Fanning as sisters during World War II, directed by Melanie Laurent, who is an actress that you might know from Inglorious Bastards or Enemy. I'm not really familiar with her directorial work, but this is on a lot of people's most anticipated films of the year list. And I can see why with the talent behind it. I'm going to put this in catch on streaming for now. So if this film comes out this year and it's been rumored to come out almost every year for like four or five years now, I'll be very excited. And that is Robert Eggers Nosferatu. And Robert Eggers has become one of my favorite filmmakers working today. Absolutely love The Northman. Absolutely love The Lighthouse and absolutely love The Witch. Nosferatu, I think, is the perfect, perfect story for him. I cannot wait to see this. And if this is coming out this year, It'll actually jump to my number three most anticipated film of the year. I will see this opening night. Operation Fortune Rue de Guerre. It's the next movie from Guy Ritchie. Guy Ritchie's had some hit and miss movies over the years, of course, but I enjoyed The Gentleman. It was pretty good. It was supposed to come out last year, got delayed. 
I'm going to drop it maybe right in front of the Nightingale. I think it's it's a movie that I would check out. Oppenheimer is the next film from Christopher Nolan, one of my favorite directors working today. I'm excited to see him tackle another drama. Dunkirk, I thought, was an incredible film, a film that only Christopher Nolan could have made. Oppenheimer, I'm, I'm interested in seeing how much of this is drenched in the Nolan style and how much of this is a traditional biopic. Nolan loves dealing with time. We've seen posters already about Oppenheimer with time and all of that. But because it's Christopher Nolan, it's up in the top of my most anticipated for sure. I think I'm going to put it right behind Nosferatu. Next is another movie that we're not sure if it's coming out this year, but the sequel's announced a while ago. It's Paddington 3, Paddington in Peru. Paddington is one of the most beloved kids movie, family movie franchises that's come out over the years. They're just really charming, endearing films. Paddington 2 was better than Paddington 1. I'm going to put Paddington 3 and watch in theaters. Peter Pan and Wendy, another live action remake from Disney. I'm hoping this one's a little different. I think the story of Peter Pan's been adapted so many times that we have a chance to get away from the animated film a bit. More excited for this than Little Mermaid, but it's still going to go down into my watch if the reviews are good. Poor Things, the next movie from Yorgos Lanthimos. It could be this year, and if it is this year, I'm definitely going opening weekend. Yorgos Lanthimos' last few films have earned my trust and my respect, of course, with The Favorite and The Lobster. He's a filmmaker that always makes really interesting stuff. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. This movie is coming out very soon, and it's getting a ton of promotional material right now. Ant-Man and the Wasp, the last film in this series, was one of my least favorite MCU movies of the last five, six years, so I think that's holding me back from getting too hyped for this. Jonathan Majors Kang is the main reason I'm super hyped. And they needed to give Ant-Man a big villain, no pun intended. Because Ant-Man and the Wasp had some of the worst villains in the entire MCU and the most underwhelming, forgettable villains in the entire MCU, it's nice to give Ant-Man something quite big to chew on. It seems like this one's going to be a bit more dramatic than Ant-Man's gone for as well, which will be nice. But I think I'm going to put it in opening weekend. Scream 6 is the next film in the Scream franchise. I really enjoyed Scream 5, and I've enjoyed the entire series. It's my favorite slasher franchise, and it's and some of them are kind of guilty pleasures. Like, I enjoy 3. We're going into Manhattan this time. We're going into into a big city. It's going to be Scream in a big city. We haven't really seen that yet. I'm excited for it, of course. I'll watch this in theaters. Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I might be a little higher on than most people. It doesn't seem like there's much anticipation for this film out there, but I really enjoyed Shazam. I'm a big fan of Captain Marvel slash Shazam in both DC Comics and before his DC appearances. I think this character is really fun. I really dug that Shazam was very faithful to the source material. The marketing for this one hasn't really sold me that it's going to be any better than the last one. And so for that reason, I'm going to put it at the bottom of my opening weekend tier. Sherlock Holmes 3, another movie that's been delayed for years and years and years and years. We have no idea if this movie's coming out this year. But if it was, I would put this at the bottom of my see it in theaters. The Super Mario Brothers movie is a movie that the internet has been very mixed on since it was announced and its cast was announced. Then our first trailer really didn't do much for the igniting that anticipation or at least making people not want to hate watch this but that second trailer looks to be embracing everything that makes mario great looks to be pulling so many of the elements that we love from all the games from so many years if nothing else it's going to be like a sonic or sonic 2 level fun little video game movie it might not do anything to change the game i'm actually going to put this in opening weekend at the bottom of my opening weekend but I, i'm actually going to see this opening weekend for sure i'm excited for the theater reaction for this because i think a lot of people are going to go into this and have a lot of fun. The Flash is a movie that I know a lot of people are excited for, but I'm not a fan of Ezra Miller in Justice League or Zack Snyder's Justice League. Ezra Miller's Flash is just not Flash at all to me, so unless they are completely changing the way Barry Allen acts in this film, I'm not really on board. Some of the ideas I've heard, I'm also not on board with. I think I can get a little bit more excited for it now that it seems to be a one and done. This thing doesn't seem like it will have the consequences that it was originally set out to have. Seeing Michael Keaton back as Batman is something that excites me, but I'm excited to see what they bring here. Ben Affleck is supposed to be in this as well. I'm excited to see what this is, and for that reason, I'll put Watch in theaters, and I'll actually put it above Aquaman, but again, it's the interpretation of Flash that needs to be changed dramatically for me in this film for it to work. 
The Killer is the next film from David Fincher. I, Mank was a good movie. I wasn't in love with Mank, and I am a big fan of like classic Hollywood style films, but I, I didn't think Mank was all that. But I am excited for David Fincher to return to obviously the killer murder mystery, put him on the map. This will definitely jump into my opening night. The Marvels is the Marvel movie coming out this year that no one is talking about, and I'm not that excited for it either. It's probably my least anticipated Marvel film of the year. Overall, this is a movie that's going to be in watch in theaters, but it's not really that high for me in my watch in theaters, especially for an MCU film. I'm going to put it right behind Scream 6. The Way of the Wind is a film from Terrence Malick about the life of Christ. When you have a filmmaker like Terrence Malick, it always makes you intrigued, especially when they go for biblical adaptations. Hopefully this will be one of his better films of the last 5-10 years. I'm going to put it in watch in theaters. Transformers Rise of the Beast is the next entry in the Transformers franchise. It looks like it's rebooting or at least rebooting from Bumblebee. I'm not really too sure. I'm not a big fan of the Transformers movies. Even Bumblebee I thought was a pretty good movie, but not great by any stretch of the imagination. But this looks a lot better. This looks like the cool aspects of Transformers finally coming to the big screen after the debacles that were the Michael Bay films. The Michael Bay films have rubbed me the wrong way so much, though, that I'm really not that excited for it. But I think it's a movie that when it comes out and people are inevitably talking about it, I will end up watching it in theaters. So I'm going to put it at the bottom here, right behind Fast and Furious 10. I think it's that type of movie. It's Wonka starring Timothy Chalamet, directed by Paul King, who is the person behind Paddington 1 and 2. Timothy Chalamet, obviously, is a, an actor who's picked and choose his projects very carefully carefully so I think this has that stamp of approval and Paul King's made some really fun and charming films over the years it seems like a good director and a good creative team for Wonka and because of that I will put this in watch in theaters so that's my list hope you guys enjoyed watching that thank you so much for watching as always if you haven't yet hit that like button down below to really help me and then subscribe to the channel which will be the best way to show your support for what I do here on this channel again if you haven't checked out that post I'm going to be posting a ton of stuff here in 2023 I really want to revamp this channel and that started with the name change and the rebranding of the graphics so I'm excited to bring more content to this channel. I do have my Star Wars Legends How to Read guide coming out very, very soon. I've worked very hard on creating that for you all, so I hope you enjoy it. I will also be making an updated How to Read Canon guide, which will be coming out this year as well. If you haven't checked out Star Wars Lads, that's the channel I'm on three days a week minimum talking Star Wars. We're covering the Bad Batch right now. We have tier lists coming out. We have book reviews coming out. We have a ton of stuff coming out over there. We also have a bracket challenge going on if you want to vote in the polls for your favorite Star Wars book of all time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.